covering all the news from every dark corner of the universe. SliceofSciFi.com Hey, greetings everyone to another Slice of Sci-Fi. I am Michael R. Menengay. And I'm Megan Zier. And I'm Ben Ragginson. Now, after a nice hiatus, <laughs> HBO finally, finally, finally unleashed upon the world. And Season six, yes. Boy, this was hyped. Oh, I big t- time. I mean, it was like every other commercial. I could not turn around and, and it, it, was, it was everywhere. Every, everywhere. I mean, they were going nuts for this next season. Well, there's a reason why. Absolutely. Uh, and we are talking about the season six premiere of True Blood. Mm-hmm. Now, fans of the show were left on the edge of their seats when last season when Bill was, hmm, how can I put this? <laughs> um, he was acting weird. Uh, weird? That's a way to put yeah, it. Yeah, tiny bit. Yeah, well, we're, Bill's weird anyway. Bill's so. an oddball. <laughs> Bill is. And minutes into the first episode, we were right back where we left off. And uh, <laughs> OMG. Yes. Um, Bill is. Um, uh, okay, I can't. Okay, we can't spoil it. Can't, no, we no, cannot no, don't, spoil don't, it for those people who have not you. seen it yet, right? Yeah, if you're behind. If you're behind. But the first episode also took some heat from the critics, yes. mostly because of the differences between the shows and the books. This, well, this has been, been a controversial for, issue for some time absolutely. now. Absolutely. And even, uh, well, uh, anyway, I was going to say, isn't that old hat? It, it is, is old actually hat. old hat. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, that's that diverged from the books quite a while ago. Quite a while ago. ago so. But it's still, it's still something it's still that everybody's spot. talking huh. about. Mm-hmm. Weird. So, worse. This is not necessarily good. Uh, the ratings were way low for the season premiere on HBO. Really? And that's never, ever good for anyone involved in a, in a production of a television show. Ooh. All that aside, however, there was a huge development in the story, in the storyline of the Wolf Pack, mm-hmm. including a big scene with a friend of Slice of Sci-Fi, Jamie Gray Hyder, mm-hmm. whom you'll recall we interviewed at the end of last season. Mm-hmm. Jamie, a wolf pup now has a more prominent role that gave her much more, um, oh, how can I put it, exposure? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of exposure. A lot of like, exposure, Like um, yes. skin, like fall frontal nudity exposure. Like that one? Hmm? Wolf mm-hmm. nudity, right? Wolf, yeah, that's called wolf, wolf nudity. nudity. Yeah, that's right. Without the fur, yeah. Well, the, the wolf pack, uh, they run around naked all the time. So. Of course they do. Which, and it's but HBO, you can do it. That's the whole right. thing. I, they can't I wear actually, their clothes. I love the fact that they're not shying away from that because that's that's the nature of being a werewolf. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, they're, they're creatures of nature. Really, you don't really keep a change of clothes with you when you turn into a werewolf. No, In you the future, kind of werewolves will have changes of clothes that expand with them like Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but until then, they're living in nudist colonies. That's right. <laughs> so, but anyway. And we're good with that. With more on this stunning reveal <laughs> is our Hollywood reporter, Zoe Hewitt, who sat down with Jamie to find out the <clears throat> naked bump truth <laughs> about true blood. Oh, yes. Hey, Slice of Sci-Fi fans, I'm Zoe Hewitt, and we have got a huge treat for you. Now, before we begin, I just want to thank all of you for getting online and sending us questions, because now is your chance. We are here with Jamie Gray Hyder from True Blood, and I bet all of you saw the episode from a couple nights ago. It was jaw-dropping, let's just say. So I know we've got some viewer questions. Let's get started, though. Jamie, how did you keep the secret of that episode? Oh, it was definitely a tough one. You know, we shot that way back in January, and I knew about the scene as early as December, and, you know, I sort of just had to keep it to myself, knowing what a huge move that was, not only for me, but for the show. And so it definitely, definitely was hard, but it's such a relief that it's out there now so I can actually talk about it. (laughs) And how did you keep it a secret, or did you, from your friends and family? I told my family the day that I decided to do it. you know, I probably could have saved them six months of anxiety and waited till <laughs> at, right before it aired, but I wanted to be up front with them, and they knew exactly the nature of the scene, and, um, you know, I just told them not to watch that episode, and, you know, I've, I've spoken to my dad at length about it, and while he's not happy about it, he is actually very supportive and understands that this is kind of how it works, and and even just the moment, momentum I've had in the last 48 hours, you know, he's really seeing what an impact, you know, it's, it's made in my career already, and, um, so while they were uh, definitely nervous, I think that uh, they have, they've started to 
ease into it a little bit and, and be, a, be a little more comfortable with it. <laughs> now, spoiler alert, guys, if you haven't seen the episode yet, then put this on pause, go watch, and come back. <laughs> now, Jamie was part of a threesome, and we saw all of her. Now, yes. how did you prepare for that? Because I would have been like shaking in my naked shoes. <laughs> well, we didn't get to wear shoes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I just I wanted to be as comfortable as possible while shooting the scene because I knew that there was going to be so much to worry about mm -hmm. as far as just nailing the context of what was happening and the action and the character of it. So I spent a month prior to filming, you know, hiking every day for an hour and a half doing pop physique in Hollywood. It's an amazing workout. Um, I didn't drink for a month and I had no carbs and no dairy. Pretty boring. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just knew that in order to do the best job I could, I didn't want to have to worry about my body. Mm -hmm. I didn't want that to distract me. So I, I knew I had to 100% feel comfortable with how I looked. And that way I could actually focus on what was happening in the scene and interacting with um, Ricky and I'll see. And uh, for those of you who don't know, when you shoot on a movie set or a TV set, there are a lot of people around. It wasn't just the three actors and maybe like a camera guy saying, okay, let's have fun. <laughs> there are a lot of crew members. So how did they make you feel comfortable on set? Well, it's, it's a very much a closed set. They had the skeleton crew there who absolutely needed to be there. And this particular episode was directed by Stephen Moyer. And he's done so much nudity and as an actor who's experienced that himself I mean we had conversations prior to shooting you know we talked on the phone and he wanted to make sure that I felt comfortable and, and what were my thoughts on the scene and we discussed everything and when I got there you know the show everyone's used to it the cast is used to it the crew is used to it and so those scenes they know how to do very well and so they had only the people that they needed and then Joe and Kelly and I and I had my life and my life savior Sarah my wardrobe girl had my robe two feet from me every two seconds and you know they'd call cut and I'd get the rope thrown on me and then they'd you know call rolling and they'd have to strip it back off you and you know as you shoot it they would get the wide shots and like the, the full-on shots and then as they would come in closer I would get to put shoes on and then I got to put sweatpants on you know as they sort of traveled up my body in the shot um so little by little you got a yes. little more clothing it's sort of like a yes. reverse strip it is like a reverse <laughs> strip and it was 30 degrees and we were outside in the middle of the woods so not only are you trying to keep from uncontrollably convulsing but then you're trying to look sexy and you're trying to be focused and you're naked it's you know it's, it's a trip it's a trip but it was definitely a, a good learning experience and I, I feel better prepared for Maybe if there is a next one, <laughs> I feel better, better prepared for that now. I was going to say, so would you agree to it again, aside from True Blood, because Jamie can't give anything away, we don't know what happens the rest of the season, but in another show, in a movie, would you be willing to strip down then? You know, I've actually turned down a lot of nudity, of roles of nudity in the past. And for, it was a very specific decision I made to do it for True Blood. This was my second season on the show. We had discussions about where my character was going and... <laughs> And the nature of the show, the nudity is not so shocking. People who watch it are already used to that kind of a thing. So it really would depend on the context. Um, it's definitely not a trend I'm trying to set, you know, or that's what's happening every time. It, it's necessary in some cases, but uh, it would definitely just be a, a case by case thing, just depending on the context and, and the, the quality and, and what, what else is happening for my role. Now, I don't know if you can answer this honestly, but we'll ask. <laughs> did you feel pressure to say yes when the producers called you and said, this is what we want to do with your character? Did you feel like you had to in order to keep your role on the show? You know, I, I didn't feel pressure. It was more just deciding, you know, I came to the conclusion that this is just so natural for my character. Mm -hmm. That's just the way that it is. I'm playing a werewolf. It's something that just exists in our world. And I didn't feel any pressure at all. You know, they, they sent me the scene. They said, are you comfortable with this? Let us know. If you're not, cool. If you are, we'll do it. But I never felt like the fate of my role on True Blood depended on this. But I knew that in making the decision to do it, that they would make me feel comfortable. They would make me look good. You know, that, that serves everybody. Yeah. And especially with Steven directing, you know, I knew I had somebody there who had been through the same thing and along with Joe and Kelly as well they had their intimate scene last season so they're all kind of naked vets and you know they did everything to make me feel comfortable and, and we just said let's do this you know 
And now, enough naked questions. You're mm -hmm. like, I do things other than take off my clothing. <laughs> <laughs> when you first started on the show, when you auditioned, it was a one-line audition. Did yes. you have any idea the role would become recurring and you'd be back season after season? No, I didn't. You know, I was guaranteed two episodes when I uh, was when I booked the role, and I ended up getting six last season, which I was completely so grateful and so stoked for. And then when I found out I was coming back, I was just excited about that. And then when I found out that I was coming back in a much bigger context and having, having a media role, I was just so grateful and so excited, you know, not only for the exposure and the opportunity to work, but the opportunity to work with that group of people again. Mm -hmm. Because we just have such a good time, you know, and despite the awkward and, and trying <laughs> nature of shooting, uh -huh. everyone manages to have a good sense of humor. So you're enjoying yourself somehow at five in the morning, naked, <laughs> freezing cold in the woods, you know, <laughs> it's, it's with wild wolves around you, you know, and shooting with the wolves is a little tense as well, but somehow we all manage to keep it lighthearted, which is, makes it seem a little crazy, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, and so those wolves are not CGI, those are actual animals then? Yes, we work with hybrid wolves, we have one full-blooded wolf, but the rest are hybrid um, between husky and wolf, okay. and we do work with them very closely, you know, in the scenes where I'm shifting, you know, my wolf will do its action, you know, her action, her name is Sarah, and... <laughs> And then she leaves, I go right where she was, and I pick up where she left off, and and it's, you know, it's really cool, because they're real wild animals, and, and there's so many safety meetings about not looking them directly in the eye, and not standing by yourself, and you're like, oh god, I'm gonna get eaten, but I was very lucky that they had me working with the same wolf that represented me the whole time, so after two days of shooting with it, the trainer said, oh, you play Danielle, you can come pet Sarah if you want, and I said, oh my god, I could pet her, you know, like, you just told me she was gonna eat my face off. Like, so I went up and I got to pet her. My hand sunk into like two inches of fur. Oh, no. and she just rubbed her head on my leg. And I, that's one of my favorite moments that I've had on the show for sure. Yeah, I mean, not everyone gets to touch a wolf, definitely. No. I mean, I haven't. <laughs> so tell us, what, what did the wolf, what did Sarah feel like? Does she feel like we're like a husky? Yeah, I mean, super soft. The fur, you look at them and they're huge and you put your hand, my hand literally just sunk into her fur. <laughs> You know, and she was super sweet and, and, and tame, and, you know, I'm not recommending that you go up to the wolf in the woods that you see and you pet them, but in that case, the trainer was right there, had her on her leash, and it was, I was just really stoked about getting to interact so closely with such a crazy, wild animal, Yeah, you know? Yeah, totally, that's really, really neat. Yeah. So have you had, have, were you able to see the trainer doing anything specific with her? Like, like does Sarah do tricks? Does she sit on command? They, they, they're insane. The wolves are so well trained. You know, for instance, in the first episode of the season, um, the wolves are eating at JD's body, the former pack master. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they so meet into these bodies, uh, uh -huh. into these fake bodies. And the wolves will be on their marks on the outside and they'll be on their leash and then they'll let off their leashes and the trainers give their commands, the wolves run to the body, they dig and dig and eat and eat and eat until they get their second command, they come right back to their trainers and right back on their leashes. I mean, they're better at hitting their marks than some actors, you know, it's like, it's amazing. Uh, but they, they can do tricks, they listen, you know. If there's a scene where someone needs to be attacked by the wolf and they have the trainer stand in for the actor and the wolf stand up on their back legs and place their paws on the chest, they, can, they just follow directions so well. It's absolutely amazing to watch. That is really amazing. So there is that scene in the opening also with the wolves where um, Joe gets the arm. Yes. And he considers it, another spoiler you guys, but then he bites into it. Yes. What was that arm? <laughs> that arm was a, you know, prosthetic arm with a little bite patch where everything was edible but not necessarily tasty. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I mean, every day he had to bite into it would just spit it out, you know, and it was a... Uh, it was a long night of shooting, and, and you had to do that several times. <laughs> and so while it was edible, it definitely wasn't tasty. <laughs> For sure. There's only so much they can do, right? Yes, exactly. They can make it safe, but they don't have to make it enjoyable. <laughs> have you had to eat any fake prosthetics? No, I haven't. Uh, my character does partake in eating JD, but it's while... I'm in wolf form. So Sarah, my wolf, took yes. care of that for me. So I didn't have to do it. Sort of like a stand-in. Like yes. things you don't like to do. Go on, Sarah. Eat that meat. Yes, exactly. I'll have my, I'll have my wolf do it. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> That's a whole new level of actor, right? <laughs> I bring my wolf everywhere I go. <laughs> She's going to do my interview for me from now on, actually. <laughs> Sarah's coming up just after this, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so you are headed to New York for the summer, is that right? Yes. Will you be working or on vacation? Yes, I'll be doing a little bit of both. Um, I'm going to be working with some people in New York and just 
auditioning out there for some new shows and you know doing press and and just sort of getting exposure in that industry um, in that region of the industry you know and and then I'll be back to LA you know for the fall mm -hmm. but I'm really excited I'm excited to kind of go somewhere different for the summer and spend a couple months there I've you know got good friends I'll be staying with and you know I'm just excited to see where the show what kind of opportunities the show you know opens up for me there and yeah, it's gonna be fun yeah definitely and you'll be at least this much closer to home right you're from yes. the DC area yes so how is it moving out here by yourself no friends no family let's go and make a go of this yeah I've been doing some stage in DC after college and my dad said to me one day you know why, aren't, why haven't you moved to LA yet if you're serious about this you need to go to LA and my parents are nine to fivers who work with the federal government their whole lives it's not like they're you know these hippie artists or anything like that you know they're very they have you know a, a very I guess by normal standards standard work situation but you know my dad encouraged me and I said I just don't I said I want to save more money before I go and he said if it's money you're worried about I'll help you out you need to go and so three weeks later I moved and um, I had one friend out here that I lived with and you know I didn't move out here because it was easy or you know I knew that it would be difficult being out here on my own but it's where I had to be if this is what I wanted to do and so any difficulties that I experience as a result of moving just pale in comparison to the opportunities that I've had mm -hmm. as a result of being here. So Yeah, clearly. <laughs> and, Especially now. Yeah, and it's not like I moved to like Nebraska or something. People <laughs> love to come visit me in LA. You know, it's, it's, it's a place where people love to come vacation. So mm -hmm. I do get to see people from home a good amount. And I get back to the East Coast a good amount as well. And so when you go home, uh, do people go, there she is, there she is. <laughs> there, there's a little bit of that. My parents and my little sister, they're so supportive and so positive and you know they keep everybody updated at home and are always so excited for me and I get home and it, the outpouring of support is absolutely insane you know our all of our friends and, and you know neighbors and everybody just are constantly keeping up with everything and I get home and they said oh we saw that interview you did for this and you were great in that and it just makes you know this insanely difficult world so much easier to bear when you have people supporting you like that um, so there is a little bit of you know, sometimes there's a little bit of the, you know, over excitement, you know, but my friends who've known me my whole life know that I'm the exact same person and I'm just kind of a laid back goofball and if that ever changes, they know to slap me. So, you know, it's fun. It's fun that everyone's excited, but I definitely still get to experience my normal home life. Mm -hmm. So then do you think that helps having friends who are absolutely not in the industry, who don't live here, does that help keep you grounded so that you're not absolutely. sort of going off going, I'm on True Blood? <laughs> yes, I, I'm, I, I think being grounded is the way to survive in this industry and my friends and family are, are great at keeping me grounded and, and even I really make an effort to, to remain that way, it, you know, I see it as my nine to five, you know, this is my job, just like somebody else's job you know in, in a finance position is their job so I really just try and look at it that way because that's what it is and and you know my friends and family just like I said are just so supportive and and you know no one treats you any differently which is what I want and I want to just have the same relationships that I've always had and I just think it's important to constantly be grateful because there are so many people trying to do this and, and I'm so grateful to be able to make a living doing it and um, I think that's what helps keep you grounded it's just, it's just being grateful and seeing it in the perspective of what it is you know this is my job and this is what I do and mm -hmm. it's no different than you know what somebody else does for a living so when you did start the show or when you started in the industry was there anyone you were super excited to meet there are so many. I mean, even on my show, there are people that I would love to work with that I haven't had the chance to because we kind of stick to ourselves. You know, the werewolves just stick to the pack. <laughs> um, but I couldn't think of a better place to have landed. The people that I'm working with on True Blood are just truly so kind and so professional, and everyone is so good at what they do, from props and special effects to stunts and acting and writing and directing. I mean, all of it is just... <laughs> It's an all-star group, and I'm just, I can't think of a better place to have landed, for sure. <laughs> Clearly. Yes, <laughs> Clearly. I'm very, I'm very happy. <laughs> well, on that note, we actually have a question that pertains a little bit to that from mm -hmm. one of our viewers. So, um, Michael H. from Nashville asks, have you bonded with any of the other actors from the show? And if so, who in particular? I've definitely bonded really a lot with all the werewolves. I mean, I've been working with the same group of people for two seasons now. And it's just amazing, you know, Dale Dickey lives in my neighborhood and we always, you know, we try to get together for coffee or, you know, Michael McMillan lives on my block and he and I will go grab a beer, you know. 
it that everyone is so down to earth that you just have normal friendships just like you do with your coworkers anywhere else and and we do you know we do make plans to hang out and and the wolves have definitely bonded when you spend 12 hours in a warming tent you know with somebody you learn a lot about them and you get real comfortable with them and you know we don't have divas or people with attitude on set so everyone just has a great time Excellent. And uh, Sam B. from Chicago asks, are there any similarities between you and your character? I mean, I've got my wild child side for sure. <laughs> I think I might be a little more secure than Danielle is with herself, you know. Um, and I think that she's constantly trying to find support and trying to find somewhere to belong. And, and you know, I mean, we all strive for that. You know, we want to belong to a group and we want to feel needed and, and we want to feel wanted and comfortable. And so those are definitely, you know, definitely similarities. I'm not quite as extreme as she is, but she's in a more extreme world. She's got to do what she's got to do. <laughs> girls got to do what a girl's got to do. You know? <laughs> now we have a question from Stuart M. from Houston, and he asks, did you warn your parents about the nudity? Now we did address this a little bit already, <laughs> so, um, so we'll move on, but Stuart M., your question was actually answered early. Yeah. <laughs> Jason G. from Los Angeles wants to know, have you ever been recognized on the street or mistaken for someone else? No, I mean, it may happen this time, although I don't think many people were looking at my face in this episode. Um, I think I'd have to walk around naked in order for people to recognize me at this point. Um, not yet. I mean, maybe it'll happen. There are times when people are like, you know, kind of give you that look and, and they'll be like, how do I know you? But, you know, my character was pretty minor last season and and I think, you know, maybe after mm -hmm. the next couple episodes air that might happen. But so far I've managed to remain pretty much under the radar. <laughs> Which is nice. So next time we talk to you, by then we'll probably have some stories. I'm going to have a hat and glasses on and I'm going to be hiding in the bush. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Someone sure, I'm sure fake mustaches. Exactly. I'll have the glasses with the nose yeah. and the mustache. And let's see, final question from Jessica H. in Roanoke. She wants to know, is Joe as hot in person as he is on TV? <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Everything about Joe is 100% real. You know, it's just, he is so disciplined and I have so much respect for him and he trains so hard when he's, you know, in session on the show, and and he, yeah, he's every bit is attractive, but he's, you know, so smart and really cool and funny, and you know, those are the aspects that people don't realize. Everyone sees him is like, oh my god, hot, you know. But <laughs> you can sit there. We have, you know, long conversations about the books we're reading and things like that too, you know. And that's he's been a great source of advice and. Um, was always very welcoming to me from the beginning when I came last season, and I'm really grateful for that. And you're kind of the new kid on the block, right? Someone yeah. to come over and say, hey, you're part of the pack. You know, it really is like, oh, thank God. You know, like, I'm so nervous. But, you know, he's a really great guy, and uh, we have a good time when we all work together. Yeah. Well, there you guys have it. Slice of sci fi -ers. You have the inside scoop from Jamie about everything from wolves to eating prosthetics <laughs> and absolutely everything in between. Now remember, you can like me on Facebook, friend me, and you'll be able to ask questions the next time around as well. Thanks for joining us on another episode of Slice of Sci-Fi. I'm Zoe Hewitt. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Well, that was awesome. Zoe's <laughs> awesome. Zoe yeah. is so cool. Zoe is so cool. Yeah, I, think, I tell you. I think Zoe and George should just do all of our interviews from now on. I know. <laughs> That's what I want. And, and can I just say, it's really great that we're getting more more use out of Zoe. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, she, she's she's, a, she's great. a great interviewer. Well, I love the fact that they're able to actually sit down with these people. I mean, we're kind of stuck in the middle of the desert in Arizona. <laughs> so, I mean, I hope you folks enjoy that, that, that we're able to actually get out there and mm -hmm. sit down with these folks and have these wonderful, wonderful interviews and conversations. And I'm so jealous that I wasn't able to be there and sit mm, down. No we kidding. can't lure anybody to this desert. I don't I know, know why. It's terrible. It's terrible. But uh, anyway, if you enjoyed that, of course, you uh, you know where to find us. We're at uh, SliceSciFi.com, SliceSciFi.tv. We're at the at the <laughs> we're at the Facebooks. We're at the Twitters and all that fun stuff. We'll have uh, more, of course, coming up uh, later this week. And uh, it's it, awesome awesomeness. So a lot of news stories coming up this Lots week. Lots of good stories coming. And uh, and uh, uh, and uh, the the flight test land this week. You do not want to miss. Oh, good. You really, really don't want to miss that. So 